In today's episode, we examine three instances of a hippopotamus attacking a human. Welcome to Wild Assault. Kicking off our collection of stories, survivor Paul Templer's account of how a hippopotamus, clearly irritated and interested in defending its territory, suddenly attacked a boat in the middle of the water. The animal mercilessly threw the men overboard and then dealt them fatal blows, finding rescue impossible. Templer spent a most remarkable day traveling the familiar expanse of his homeland, Zimbabwe. At the age of 28, he worked as a tour guide and organized photo safaris, paying close attention to every detail. Before that, he was away for several years, serving in the British Army. However, returning to the African jungle sparked in him a magical sense of belonging. The wildlife, the diversity of flora and fauna, the majesty of the land, it all made him feel at home. Templer noted that the guide certification program in Zimbabwe is rigorous, and only those who pass all the tests can be proud of their achievement. He was happy to show tourists all the splendor of the region's wildlife, including the curious hippos, which have always been very territorial. It was an idyllic period in his life, he said. Life was real and beautiful until the day that turned into a real nightmare. One day, Templer had an accident in the office that upset him so much that the whole day became a real nightmare. However, he tried not to think about it and continued to enjoy the beauty of the area, especially the river, which always pleased his eyes with its natural harmony. On Saturday, March 9, 1996, Paul Templer received word that a good friend of his, who was to lead a canoe safari on the Zambezi River, had contracted malaria. Since Templer knew this stretch of river like the back of his hand, he agreed to take his friend's place. The expedition consisted of six safari clients, four Air France crew members, and a couple from Germany, three novice guides and Templer himself. They had three canoes, with clients in each canoe and the guide in the back. In addition, one of the guide's apprentices used a single-seat rescue kayak. Thus, they traveled down the famous Zambezi River, Everything was going according to plan. Everyone was having a great time, Templer recalled. But everything changed at one point when the expedition came across a pack of about 10 hippos. On the Zambezi River, which is the fourth longest in Africa, this was not an uncommon occurrence. At first they were not bothered, being at a safe distance from the animals. But as they got closer, they began to realize they needed to go around the herd. They tried to avoid the hippos, but they kept coming closer and closer. The canoe that Templer was in was leading the way, followed by two other canoes and a kayak. Instead of waiting for the others, the third canoe deviated from its planned course. Templer couldn't understand how it happened. Suddenly a hard thump was heard. He saw the canoe jump into the air and the guide from the back of the canoe ejected. The clients managed to stay in their canoe somehow. Evans was in the water and the current carried him towards a female hippopotamus and her cub, 150 meters away from us. He knew he had to get him out urgently. He didn't have time to drop off his clients. He called Ben, one of the other guides, to take care of the clients who were in the attacked canoe and took them to a safe rock in the middle of the river where the hippos couldn't reach. Meanwhile, Templer turned his canoe around to approach Evans and drag him into his canoe. He swam toward him coming closer and closer, and I noticed a wave coming toward me. It was like a scene from old movies when a torpedo approaches a ship. He knew something big was coming at me, either a hippopotamus or a huge crocodile, he recounted. But Templer also knew that if he hit the water hard with his oar, the sound would be very loud. And it seems that hitting the water makes the animals back off. So he made a hard stroke, and just as he had intended, the wave stopped. Templer was approaching Evans, but they were also approaching the female and her cub. He leaned over. It was like a scene out of a Hollywood movie. Evans reached out. Their fingers barely touched. And then the water between us exploded. It happened so fast that he didn't have time to figure out what happened. One such incident happened to Templer when he found herself in Zambezi National Park in Zimbabwe. In a river valley, 
he saw a herd of hippos swimming gracefully in the water and grazing on the bank. He decided to get closer to get a better look at these impressive animals. However, what happened next was suddenly nightmarish and surreal to her. Suddenly, he felt her feet begin to sink downward, as if he was falling beneath the surface of the water. His first reaction was to try to break free and get to shore, but he couldn't move. Quickly looking around, he realized with horror that he was up to her waist in the sarcophagus of a giant hippopotamus. The incredible pressure on his body and legs caused his fear and anxiety. He realized that his life depended on keeping these animals calm. When Templar regained consciousness and looked around, he found that first of all, Evans was not beside him. He assumed that he had been rescued and decided that he would now try to get out on his own. Struggling stubbornly against the water depths and waves, Templar moved forward. But suddenly everything changed. A huge hippopotamus, with its jaws open, was coming toward him. Miraculously, he avoided plunging into its jaws. And in the end, Templar found himself caught between its teeth, one foot behind them, and his shoulders and head hanging down on the other side. As he struggled hard and tried to defend himself, he realized that the hippopotamus was no longer in control and was seeking to tear him apart. But thanks to the increased recording speed, everything was happening in slow motion. When the hippopotamus went underwater, Templar held his breath. And when they came to the surface, he tried to take a deep breath and hold on to its tusks to avoid being killed. In all, this nightmarish attack lasted several minutes. In the meantime, Mac, a student guide in a rescue kayak, boldly and decisively approached to save Templar at the risk of his own life. He brought his boat up to Templar's face, and Templar, grabbing the handle of the kayak, was dragged to the relative safety of a rock. The expedition, however, found itself in an extremely difficult situation. According to Lewison, people who live near hippos are more likely to be attacked than tourists. Most attacks occur in the water, but hippos sometimes also attack people who are trying to protect their crops from them, Lewison explained. While there are some cases of attacks on tourists, most attacks are on locals. The threat from Africa's growing population only exacerbates this situation, she said, increasing the likelihood of such deadly encounters. Still, despite all the misfortune and hardship, hippos are an important component of sub-Saharan Africa's ecosystem. Hippos fulfill an important ecological role in the freshwater areas where they live. They recycle nutrients from excreta and consume large quantities of plants, playing the role of ecosystem engineers, Maruti explained. Hippos don't attack to eat people, but to drive them away from themselves, Lewison said. He didn't think they were particularly aggressive, but when they are sufficiently subdued and pushed, they can put up a fight. Perched on a rock and in a difficult position, Templar turned to Mac, the rescuer, and asked where Evans was. Replied Mac, he's gone, just gone. Templar realized that he needed to calm down first and then devise a plan to get down the cliff to the riverbank. He assessed the situation, realizing that one man was missing and with him the first aid kit, walkie-talkie, and gun had disappeared. All that remained were six frightened customers, two canoes, and one paddle. Templar himself suffered serious injuries. His left leg was especially bad. It felt like someone had smashed it with a hammer. His arms couldn't move. One of them was crushed to a pulp, Max said. Blood was bubbling out of his mouth. It was obvious that his lung had been punctured. Mac turned Templar over and noticed the hole in his back, which he had covered with a snack wrapper. Although everyone was in difficult circumstances, the group was determined to survive and prepared to deal with any adversity in order to get home. After a few long minutes that seemed like an eternity, she began to calm down. The hippos that grazed peacefully around her paid no attention to her. She felt unnoticed and safe in this dangerous situation. With each step as she slowly moved backward, her heart clenched with fear. She was afraid of whacking the beast that possessed this chilling darkness. Finally, when she reached the shore, she was pleasantly surprised. The other tourists she had seen earlier had already disappeared in the distance. 
She was truly grateful that she was able to escape this nightmarish moment, and she felt like her life had changed forever. The strength and determination she had gained after her encounter with the hippo that had filled her soul with terror was now awakened in her heart. The Isimangaliso Park in South Africa is a place where visitors can see hippos in live conditions. There is evidence that large vessels offer great protection from possible attacks by these animals. However, it is important to realize that hippos can be dangerous to humans and their attacks can lead to serious injuries and even death. Evans was in serious trouble when his rescuer, Templar, was attempted to be helped by a hippopotamus. Templar, having been attacked, found himself in the water again, his legs stuck, but his hands free. He tried to hold the gun, but was badly beaten and unable to hold it. The aggressive hippopotamus again pushed Templar away, who made the decision to climb down the cliff despite the risk. Templar was placed in the canoe, and Ben paddled. The hippopotamus continued to chase and push the canoe, but Templar was experiencing an inner conflict. Despite this, he felt calm. He described it as a deep spiritual experience where he realized he had made the choice to stay and being intensely painful, thought about death, and would even prefer it. Ben and Templar managed to get out of the river, but they didn't find Evans. His body was discovered a few days later. It was concluded that he had drowned without being attacked by an animal. In the meantime, several people on the shore realized something was wrong in the river, and a well-trained team of lifeguards from Zimbabwe were able to evacuate the others from the safety of the cliff. The next challenge for Templar was getting medical attention. It took him eight hours to get to the nearest hospital, and he underwent several major surgeries. He thought he might lose his arms and one leg, but surgeons saved his life, as well as his right arm and both legs. Upon learning of the loss of his left arm, Templar was devastated, but relief came when he realized the rest of his body had been saved. Templar underwent physical therapy and rehabilitation in Zimbabwe, and then in the United Kingdom, where he was fitted with a prosthesis. He struggled to return to a normal life after this difficult period. In the following story, you will learn about a hippo attack on a two-year-old boy named Iga Paul, who was playing near his home in Uganda. While most children were spending their time outside on a Sunday afternoon, Iga Paul unexpectedly became the victim of a hippopotamus attack. That Sunday afternoon, Iga Paul was spending his time the way most two-year-olds do, playing near his home. His independence and carefree nature allowed him to explore his surroundings and enjoy outdoor play. But Iga was unaware of how close to his home was Lake Edward, one of the smallest bodies of water in the Great Rift Valley in Uganda. The water in the lake's shimmering blue hue caught the toddler's attention, but he was not yet aware that this lake was home to large and hungry creatures. Just 800 yards from his home, Lake Edward stretched quietly, unaware of what lurked in its depths. Hippos, huge aquatic creatures, magnificently adapted to life in the water, had chosen this particular lake as their home. They stayed there, feeding on algae and plants, and rarely showed themselves to people living nearby. Unaware of the presence of dangerous neighbors in the lake, Iga continued to play near his home on Sunday afternoons. His childish joy and laughter filled the air around him as he forgot his worldly cares and immersed himself in his little world of play and fantasy. It was at this time, not far from him, that one of the hippos decided to leave his usual habitat and explore the neighborhood. But something went wrong, and a hippopotamus near Iga's house unexpectedly attacked the baby. In an area near the lake, a weekend event occurred on December 4th at about 3 p.m. local time when a hippopotamus, a rare visitor to the area, attacked and partially devoured a boy. The incident was recorded by the Ugandan police. A random passerby who witnessed the attack tried to thwart the hippopotamus by throwing stones at it. Eventually, the man managed to scare the animal and it spat the boy out before returning to the lake. Thanks to the bravery of Crispas Baganza, who was in the vicinity, it was possible to save the victim. He threw stones at the hippopotamus, scaring it and forcing it to release the boy, Ugandan police officials said. This is the first time a hippo has climbed the shore of Lake Edward 
and attacked a child, the police said in a statement. Iga was taken to a local clinic with his injuries and then transported to a hospital in Western Uganda for further treatment. He was given a rabies vaccination and later discharged under the care of his parents. Although the hippo was frightened and returned to the lake, all residents living near wildlife sanctuaries and wildlife habitats should be aware of the danger they pose. Wild animals instinctively see humans as a threat and any interaction with them can result in strange or aggressive behavior, police stressed. Hippos are the third largest land animals and live in the waters of rivers, lakes, and swamps of eastern, central, and southern sub-Saharan Africa. As reported in Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo, according to National Geographic, hippos kill about 500 people each year in Africa and are among the most dangerous mammals in the world. They are capable of killing twice as many people as lions. In the next story, you will learn about an angry hippo attacking a zookeeper after he tried to stop a fight between hippos in their enclosure. The keeper found himself in a dangerous situation trying to escape the aggressive animal, but he managed to escape from the enclosure to safety. Despite the horrific incident, the zookeeper was unhurt. His heart was pounding frantically, a frenzied roar erupted from his chest, and the skin right on his back turned into a sea of goosebumps. He was completely consumed by fear and adrenaline. He had no idea what outcomes might await him in this brutal and unpredictable fight. The hippopotamus was gigantic. Its size and powerful limbs allowed it to easily handle a human in its territory. His body was covered with a thick and tough coloration that protected him from any external influences. The white tusks on his lower jaw just stuck out of his mouth, as if the caretaker was standing in front of a living hell monster. The ranger used everything he had at hand to protect himself. He threw himself to the ground and turned sideways to the hippo to protect the more vulnerable parts of his body. He punched it with his fists, kicked it with his legs, and tried to distract it to prevent it from attacking himself. He realized that the only thing that could save him was to hold the hippo at a distance and wait for the moment he could escape from the enclosure. But despite his best efforts, the hippo was intent on its prey. He kept advancing on the keeper, hoping to turn the victory to his side. His eyes were burning with a burning desire to avenge the fight and to tell his rival who was in charge. During this tense confrontation, every second seemed like an eternity. With each new jump of the hippopotamus, the keeper jumped back and fought for his life. The entire enclosure was filled with the sounds of rumbling and growling that reflected his inner state. Finally, the keeper's strength began to wear out. He felt that he could no longer resist the hippo's relentless attack. The photographs of this event left an indelible mark on the memory of all who saw them. They evoked horror and awe, a reminder of the fragility of human life and the fact that even the friendliest and seemingly harmless animals can become a deadly threat. Suddenly the hippopotamus shifted his attention to rest, continuing to pluck leaves off the plants, but the malice in his eyes was obvious. The keeper, realizing that this was a moment of chance, got to his feet and tried to leave the enclosure. However, the hippo, as if programmed to attack, lunged at him again, this time exactly as the man was getting out of the enclosure. He managed to escape to safety, saving himself from a dangerous situation. The hippo's aggressive behavior and the fight with another bull became the subject of an investigation by Changsha Forestry Department officials. Although the zookeeper successfully escaped serious injury, the horrifying episode has shaken up the staff and necessitated changes to the safety policy when dealing with dangerous animals. A zoo spokesperson emphasized that staff must be especially cautious when entering enclosures with all animals. They should be extra vigilant and avoid situations where males are fighting or females are in heat. Relationships with hippos, as with other territorial animals, require special attention and extreme caution. Although attacks by hippos on humans are rare, the consequences of such encounters can be serious. Hippos are characterized by their territoriality, immense strength and deadly bites. Overcoming all fear, the zookeeper showed bravery 
and the ability to defend himself from an attack by an enraged hippo, preserving his life. This incident serves as a reminder to use caution and focus their efforts on maintaining a safe environment for all who work with wildlife.